the last week of August um, with Miss Jessie, that's me, in Kidopolis. That's what you're watching right now. We are talking about, um, our theme actually is indescribable. And your creator has no limits. Who's your creator? One, two, three, go. God! Good job. Um, and in that, we're talking about our own creativity and what that means for us as Christians, what that means for us um, as followers of Jesus, imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. So think about all of the things, all of the indescribable things that God has made and God has done. I mean, this picture is pretty cool. It has just a couple examples, right? And God created that. His creativity is just like, oof, more than I could ever imagine. But because we're made in his image, our creativity is more than we can ever imagine. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about um, how God created you to share his story. That is your purpose. That is, uh, you need to go around, tell people about God, tell them about his son, tell them about his son, Jesus, and what he did for us so that we could live a very lovely eternal life. Um, so I'm going to leave you to the so-and-so show this week. It's a little short, sorry, but so-and-so show is going to tell you what you have in common, what I have in common, what we have in common with this bucket of salt and this light bulb. Maybe not this light bulb, light bulbs in general, and maybe not this exact bucket of salt, but salt in general. So, so, and so, I am going to leave you to that. You have fun with John and Brandon. I'll see you back in a few minutes. <laughs> hmm. A six-legged chicken. It's chicken for everyone. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels! The best idea yet. Ah, oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes. Pat Sajak scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing an awesome mustache. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self-respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then, with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef, Lu the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, no, no. Those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon. Uh. Doesn't count. Aha! What about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. Mm -hmm. We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Bonjour. Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Madeleine Lemold, but I am called Maddie, and I know 
quite a bit. I know every winner of the Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine. Oh. But I am most known for what I can cook. Great, you're a cook. <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And by the way, I do not have a mustache. Oh, it, it suits you. Merci. So, uh, wh what are you going to cook for us today? Les poissons! Les poissons? <laughs> les poissons! Oh, I love les poissons. Oh, me too. <laughs> but uh, no. We are making a 250-year-old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet... They are French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's recipe leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we... Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum, better up. You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. All right, this is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is, there, uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father, who learned it from his mother, who learned it from her great aunt, who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. Huh. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down to my family. Oh, well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Maddie's cookbook where all my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Ah, oui, oui. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! And I had to tinkle and put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to it. The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. 
The sermon from the mouths? I thought all sermons were from the mouths. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So, everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. Thank you for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making a mask as big as. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah, first exercise. Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this, and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go. One. Click, click, click. 14. Click, click, click. Elastigirl. Click, click, click. Three hole punch. Click, click, click. 24. Hey, we made salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Yeah. But what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said, You are the salt of the earth? Yeah, so when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? <laughs> okay. Um... Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this, turn the lights on. We do it 137 times. Go. One. Uh, 26! Uh, uh, grape nuts! Uh, uh, Willie Shoemaker! Uh, uh, 137! Oh, what's next, Kellens? Right. So first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right. Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand. You do? No. Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right. Let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven so we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs at the same times, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go. One, 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 six, 45. Now point to God because he is the most important. Ah, ah, I think I need to take the elevator. Ah. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. Ah, going down. Ah, 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 ah. Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, 
and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I would feel so left out. Yeah, Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right. Reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question, because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. <laughs> yum, too. Also, yum. Oh, these are amazing. Yeah, good. We gotta tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now! We need to tell people right now. Hey, everybody, you gotta try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so and so show. Long as it's all done. Try it right now. Right now! John. John! I'm ready to get ready. I'll be running. You do the spin! <coughs> All of them! Go go! Okay, I have a little bit more salt to clean up, but I'm not gonna worry too much if I don't get every single grain because salt makes things better, right? Anyways, um, we're gonna do our memory verse and then we're gonna do prayers. Um, memory verse, we have two levels. We have versity, those are like the bigger kids, I would say first grade and up, um, or adults if you're watching. This is your challenge mode, okay? And then we have junior versity, which is like kindergarten and below, which is like maybe a little bit easier to memorize. It's only two lines as opposed to four. So we'll do the junior varsity kiddos first, and then we'll do the varsity. Um, it just makes sense that way since it's on the same verse. Okay, so we are in Psalm 145, verse 3. Junior varsity, here we go. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. Psalm 145, verse 3. And play around with that a little bit. Play around. Lord! You are great. You are really worthy of praise. Have fun with it, okay? These psalms, um, in the book of Psalms, they're songs, so they were meant to kind of be sung. So see if you can come up with your own little song for it to help you remember it. I'm not going to sing. I'm not good at singing, but I am good at making funny voices. So that's what you get. Now we're moving on to diversity. Bigger kids, here we go. All four lines. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Lord. You are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145, verse 3. And my varsity kiddos, my bear kiddos, I know it might, you might be too cool to do the silly voices or make a song, but go ahead and give it a try. See how it goes. You might be inspired. And I betcha... God is going to be smiling, and you will feel so blessed by just having fun with some of uh, the Lord's Word. So, that is our memory verse, and I love the second half of it, even though our junior university, you don't have to memorize this, but think about it. No one can completely understand how great you are. There are so many things about God that we, like, just don't ever understand. 
at least at least not in this life right we're not going to understand how far his creativity and his depths go and that is something that about ourselves too we never know how capable we are of sharing god's word and doing his work so keep that in mind just like we don't understand how completely great he is we can't understand that about ourselves so we just got to keep pushing right all right next is prayer requests um my prayer request is i've had a very busy week and i've been feeling a little under the weather i'm okay though um so if you could pray for that and i bet you guys are all we're all in the same boat i know a lot of kiddos are back to school and things are kind of starting to gear back into normal so let's pray that we all get into a good routine together in a great way and then it goes really well okay dear heavenly father thank you so much for my friends thank you for this church that i get to teach at Thank you for helping me see a sliver of how creative I can be to share your word and teach my kiddos. I hope that they can see their capabilities and work towards you and your um, purpose. Um, I pray that as we are moving towards a little bit more normal life, a little bit more routine, that we keep you in our hearts and in our actions and that things go smoothly. We love you, Lord, and we pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you this week. I will see you next month, and next month, it's only a week away. It's September, right? September already. We're already like three quarters of the way through the year, something like that, but, or th two thirds of the way. I'm really bad at math, but I'll see you next month. I know for sure, whether it's two thirds or three quarters, that next month is September, and I will see you then. <laughs> Bye. Okay, one quarter of the year would be three months and one third of the year would be four months. So one, two, three, that is a quarter. One, two, three, that is a quarter. One, two, that is a quarter. So at the end, oh, the beginning of September, at the end of August, we would have been four, four. At the end of August, we're now two thirds of the way through the year, but September, at the end of September, we'll be three quarters of the way through the year. Okay, I get it. I think that makes sense, right?